<laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to Hop Topics, uh, the show where we talk about movies and beer. And beer. M my name is Matt. I'm Cameron. And today's movie is Men in Black International. And our beer today is... The Lagunitas Equinox. It's kind of spacey. We wanted a different beer, but you know, whatever. We did the best we could with what we had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, going into this movie, what kind of expectations were you having? Anything, like, positive, negative? It was mostly negative. Like, um, like, I didn't have very high expectations with this one. I mean, the last one, the third one didn't, didn't, like, tell the story very well. It just, it just didn't flow very well. And this one, yeah, I just didn't think this was going to be a very good movie at all. It just seemed... <laughs> just seemed kind of like forced like they needed to make this movie for some reason they just they just like yeah let's put out a movie why not what, what did you think you know, well obviously easy cash grab you know men in black even with you know each iteration getting worse and worse it was definitely going to be an easy cash grab for them like people are going to see it regardless um going into it i had some decent expectations. I didn't think it was going to be a great movie, but, you know, I thought coming off of, you know, Thor Ragnarok and uh, the Avengers, that at least Chris Emsworth has found a really good comp comp comedic stride, and that he would be really funny in this. So, that's what I was hoping for. Um, but, you know, like we think, um, like Matt thinks, uh, he definitely did not have very great expectations. I had, like, very middle of the road, you know, almost no expectations except uh, that Chris Hemsworth was going to be entertaining. But, uh, yeah. yeah, so going in with low expectations, how, how did it pay off? <laughs> um, the movie wasn't... Terrible, but I mean, it was not a, a great movie. It was, it was, it was a, it was on par. It wasn't a great movie like a lot of the movies that have already come out this year, but it wasn't by far the worst movie that has come out this year. There have been a few, uh, but yeah, um, it was, it was okay. Yeah, um, overall, I thought. There was some, there was some good comedy, you know, some interesting action, a little too much CGI in certain parts, but it's kind of to be expected with, you know, super alien technology and all the aliens, of course. Um, but they did do a pretty good job with some of the practical effects when they actually util utilize them. True. So, True. That was nice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was an okay movie. It was better than. Two and three in the Men in Black franchise, Boom. but still a far cry from the first one. Yeah, first one pretty much set the set, <laughs> set the standard that they just can't, they just can't, you know, yeah. they can't redo. Yes, yeah. this is, you know, a much better attempt. Yeah, definitely a much better attempt than the last two. Yeah, and there's some big name actors in there. I mean, there you really got is Chris Hemsworth. Um, Obviously, coming off of Avengers, massive movie. Um, Liam Neeson's in the movie. Uh, Emma Thompson's in the movie, and so like you do get some pretty big names going into this. Yeah, you you really do. I mean, like uh, it's just it, they just couldn't carry the same like the it just they couldn't carry the same weight uh, that the like that the first movie set precedent for. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, again, it's not a terrible movie. It's just, it's not great. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, let's talk about kind of a spoiler-free, you know, overall story, plot points, and everything. Um, <laughs> you go for it. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll say so in my rating to why I'm rating it so low, but, um. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, b basically, uh, it, 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 it's Tessa Thompson, right? 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I just want to make sure I got that right. Uh, <laughs> um, she basically finds the Men in Black and wants to be a member. Um, she ends up being paired up with Chris Hemsworth's character, and he ends up basically showing her what he's all about. Um, and that's just from the what's in the trailer. Like, yeah. <laughs> so she's a new recruit. He's a you know field agent veteran. <laughs> And um, they don't really give too much in terms of, um, like, who the villains are, from what I can tell. They they allude to villains in the trailer, but, I mean, they don't really, they don't really outright say who they are. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah, basically it's Men in Black trying to save the world. Again. Again. <laughs> So. And there were those were there were a couple of cool little nods to um, to the first movie in the you know office Liam Neeson's office he's one of the you know head guys for the London branch um, and there's like oil paintings of uh, you know Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones characters from the first movie defeating the alien from that so you know that was kind of a cool little nod and then there's uh, another one of a scene that happens at the very beginning of the movie. But, uh... Yeah, so, I mean, like, yeah, it's basically, again, Men in Black trying to save the world from aliens again. So... Yeah, pretty much. You know, the standard <laughs> Men in Black movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just without as much of the charm and... Yeah. Not quite as much of the witty humor. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What would you What would you rate this What would you rate this movie overall? Well, since we're this is the first time we're doing this uh, rating system, we'll kind of explain it. Um, we're doing a system. Basically, is this a movie that you have to see in theaters? Like, is it one of those experiences that you really want to see one hundred percent in theaters? Um, is it one of those wait for the bargain day at the theaters? Um, so that, you know, you're only spending six bucks or a matinee kind of thing. Like Black Friday sales. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you should see it, but yeah, on a cheap day. Yeah. Uh, is this, um, you know, rent it on Redbox? Is this going to be uh, wait for the movie channels or Netflix to have it? Or is this going to be just a skip this movie entirely? That's, okay. that's how we're doing the rating system. Um, I'm gonna go with. Wait for Netflix or the movie channels. Uh, don't don't spend your money on this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, unless you're unless you're a diehard fan of Men in Black movies or the fact that you have all the other ones and you want to you keep the collection going. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just wait until it's on the movie channels or Netflix. It's it's definitely not really worth a buy. Yeah. So. And my main reasoning for that is. We finished watching the movie, and we're kind of talking about it on the way home, and I really didn't have anything to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just like, it just kind of like flatline. It was, all, it was kind of forgettable. Um, I didn't even really remember it at the beginning of the movie. That's kind of why I leaned into you for the synopsis. <laughs> it's just, it's just like, okay, it was, it was fine. Well, if you if I talked about the beginning of the movie, it pretty much gives away the entire movie. So I had yeah. to wait until I we wait until the end of the video for that. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah. You can't really give too many plot points without spoiling anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, if you don't care about that, because you're probably not going to see this movie for another year, um, stick around to the end of the video. But uh, off of that, let's talk about this beer. Yeah, this beer we have, it's uh, Lagunitas Equinox. It's, you know, it's not a bad beer. It's that's pretty good. good. It's a uh, it's a pale ale. Um, not hoppy, or not too hoppy. Very light on the hops. Yeah. Um, pretty light in color, easy to drink. Oh, yeah. Super uh, easy. A little, little floral. Um, definitely, definitely. It's a... Uh, 
It's eight point nine percent alcohol by volume, which is which yeah. is pretty decent. I which mean, is really good for a pale for ale. For pale ale, yeah, which is nice. Yeah, so, which uh, yeah, and also it says fifty IBUs. Fifty IBUs. That's international bitterness units. Um, yeah, so it's it's a little higher than what you're gonna get from any stouts or pilsners or lagers or anything like that. It's just. A nice hoppiness, nice little bitterness to kind of cut through some of the fruitiness in the beer. Yeah. Um, one thing I can definitely say is if you ever read the long thing on the side, you have to have a high tolerance for BS. Yeah, and that is annoying as heck to read. Yeah. It, took me, it took me a couple times, like, reading a couple sentences over and over again. I'm just all like... I hate this. Oh. Yeah, you're definitely either going to want to murder me. You're going to really either want to murder somebody because, <laughs> like, whoever wrote this was out, out to die because it's it's insanity. And it's... It doesn't, it's really ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it doesn't help. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, Lagunitas, they make a lot of great beers. Um, not a whole lot I can say about them. From Petaluma, California, um, and I think they have a brewery in Chicago. I uh, so. I'd have to double check on that to be one hundred percent sure. But uh, and then they were bought up by a larger brewery. I forget who. One of the big, you know, like the Heineken or, you know. Yeah. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the one of the bigger one of the bigger ones that are trying to buy up all these. Yeah. Small breweries, just so like they the, can the benefit them. of that is that hopefully more craft beer gets cheaper. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. But uh, pump big money into <laughs> small good beers. <laughs> yeah. Um. But on topic for the movie, give this beer a solid. Uh, mm, yeah, I I give this a four. Yeah, I definitely four out of five. five. Yeah, give uh, this a four. Four out of five, uh, hmm, I didn't really think of a uh, witty movie-related thing. Four out of five universe-ending weapons, I suppose. <laughs> I'll give this a four out of five uh, Chris Hemsworth sleeping <laughs> on his desks. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give that. That was, that was pretty good. Your meditations. <laughs> you snore during your meditation. <laughs> It's a yeah. It's a it's a good light beer. I mean, it's more floral than it is hoppy. Yeah, it's also a good beginner beer. So I mean, you know. Yeah, if you're kind of afraid of IPAs, you want to branch out, but don't want to get super hoppy and super bitter. Uh, just be a good choice. Yeah, I mean, this is also a good like like in between like branching into like stronger stronger beers and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, um, eight point nine percent is definitely no joke. Yeah, especially if you're trying to uh, branch into like uh, like hoppier beers as well, yeah. or like more floral or, beer, beers and stuff like that. Or even like double IPAs, which aren't as hoppy but more malty, and yeah. you know, this this a good a good uh, bridge kind of beer. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I yeah. like this. It's a good bridge beer. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So. All right. So. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <sighs> okay. So. The beginning scene at the beginning of the movie um, basically gives you away the entire rest of the movie. Yeah. Well, it doesn't immediately give it away, but you pay enough attention to it, and... Sorry, man. Went a little overboard. Kind of forgot I was sharing. You can, uh, have, you can have the rest. It's okay. Yay! More beer! Another beer! Um, but, I mean, if you know, if you know anything about any any movie really I mean you you know what's gonna happen yeah, like you know how foreshadowing yeah, exactly <laughs> um, the con the one thing that they try and hammer home in this movie and they do it <coughs> so much to this movie is like it's re they're really hard, heavy on fate yeah and like things happen the universe will always put you right where you need to be <clears throat> uttered over and over again during <clears throat> this movie 
like, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it was meant to happen. These things were meant to fall into place like this. Um, it's, it really is hammering at you over and over and over again. It's just, it's really annoying. Yeah, it is annoying. And, uh, I mean, I didn't notice it quite as much as he did. I was just kind of trying to enjoy the movie. I mean, obviously thinking about it critically, because, you know, i got to review the movie. But, you know, just trying to focus more on the good parts of the movie, so that I don't come off as just bashing the movie throughout the whole video. Because it isn't so bad that I need to bash the movie throughout the whole video. True. I mean, it's not. It it, it does have its it does have its high points. I mean, Chris yeah. Hemsworth uh, is is great throughout the movie. Like his yeah. his his wit and his banter back and forth with uh, Tessa Thompson is really really good. Like she plays a great great like um, like a stoic role where he's the more the more goofball um, kind of aloof character. Yeah. Definitely. Which, which, it, like, they play so well together. They just, they have great chemistry in, like, yeah, every movie that is, you've been that in. is absolutely true. And, you know, it definitely helps that they were together on, you know, Thor Ragnarok, yep. which was a terrific movie. Might, might do just a, a flashback review on that one someday, because I'd love that movie. I'll take any excuse to rewatch it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they have great chemistry on screen. Their banter is on point. Um... Pawnee, the little Pawnee yeah, character in there. Pawnee, uh, the little yeah, the little guy, the little guy. He's called. He's played by uh, uh, Kumail Nanjiani. Um, he's he, he everything. He's like every, he just steals the scene every single time. Every he's time in it. he's in it. It's it's it, some of the stuff he says is a little dorky, you know, like whatever. But it, a lot of his lines and um, his delivery is on point and. He's the majority of the comedy in the movie. Oh, definitely. Like he sets he sets up everything so well, and like everything is just everything just plays off of him so well in the movie. Um, the um, the one person that I did not know was actually in this movie was uh, um, Rebecca Ferguson, who plays the um, plays the um, like the like the gun dealer in the movie. Um, yeah. Aliens weapon stealer. Yeah, um, who's also an alien herself. But I was like, I was like, I know this lady from somewhere, and she's from the um, she's from the last few Mission Impossible movies. Um, and man, she looks so good in this movie. Looks I was super like, good. damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like she, like she her character is play plays really well. I mean, it's just it, it just it keeps. Like her, her character is so rewarding. I mean, whether she had like she has like fifteen minutes of this movie. Yeah, seriously. And like, the amount of time you're spending on this character is <laughs> seriously because he really likes the way she looks. Exactly. I mean, like, she I mean, does. well, that and she plays the character really well, and mm -hmm. she also like, um, the the alien herself is actually really really cool. Like, mm -hmm. um, like a lot of things that you you. Like you're not expecting, and then all of a sudden, like she, uh, a third fist from her back comes out and yeah. <laughs> punches Chris Hemsworth in the face. <laughs> yeah. So like that was pretty great. It was like, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a very very good character, uh, as well as Pawnee. Um, yeah. Um, Liam Neeson. As he. <laughs> Fine. He was he was good. He was okay. <laughs> he was, I mean, like, he was Liam Neeson. He I mean, really yeah, he, <laughs> he's that huge uh, presence in the movie, I yeah. suppose. Even though he ended up being the bad guy, um, which <laughs> is so heavy-handedly given to you through, you know, foreshadowing. Yeah, that <laughs> it's like they're trying to set up a red herring character. Like, oh man, this guy. This guy seems this really guy, suspicious. He doesn't I mean, really like Chris Hemsworth. He must be evil. Yeah, but exactly. No, no, yeah, not at all. Yeah, no. Like, like you can you, you see, you right through see it yeah, like, you totally see yeah. right through it. It's just it, they tried so hard to pin it on this character, but you totally know, you totally oh, know absolutely. that it's it's Liam Neeson as the bad guy, yeah. which which was fine. But I mean, like you want know, a little, I you want need, I didn't need it to be shoved down my throat so yeah. early in the movie. It's like you yeah. see that opening scene where they're facing what the main villains are, which is uh, an alien species called the Hive, 
that infiltrates other species and wants to, I don't know, eradicate. And yeah. that's also one of the weird things, was, like, <laughs> they set up this exposition um, about how they assimilate into another species, into another species. instead species. of, like, destroying them. It's, yeah. It's, it's to mostly, grow their species. To grow their species. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, so, I mean, it's just... It is the the think of a lot. It was a lot of lo, a lot of the long lines of like the Borg from Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they just just to continually grow their own numbers. Yeah. But they're still but then, controlled by one being. Yeah. But they don't really explain that. Yeah. No. They they don't really. But then. But you you. They're could, literally you could, their goal in this movie. Uh, the goal of William Neeson's character is to get their hands on a weapon that can destroy planets and solar systems in a single blast. And that just kind of contradicts what we have <laughs> the, already been told the about, whole thing about the The whole thing about the alien species. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was pretty weird. Um, you know, that, that bothered me. I think it was. I think it was the Hive wanted it more to have the weapon, not necessarily use it. Uh, they wanted it out of the con like out of control of everybody else that could potentially destroy the hive. That's yeah. what I thought, um, which would be the most logical sense if you're a hive mind trying to infiltrate into other beings to make them part of you. But you know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we won't we won't know because you know we won't get, have a chance to talk to the writers, <laughs> <laughs> which two out of the three writers. <laughs> we're talking Transformers movies. Yeah, <laughs> they, uh, they worked on the last one, the last uh, last uh, night, and so that was so bad. So bad. So bad. It turned from hey, let's watch a neat movie about monster fights or robot fights into just a weird. How annoying! Of how Shady annoying Cam. we can make Sh Shia LaBeouf. How annoying can we make Shia LaBeouf? Shia LaBeouf wasn't even in the last one, though. He wasn't in the last one. That's true, but I mean, like, that's what the Transformers movies turned into until the third one, and then after that, it's like, let's put Mark Wahlberg in movies. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean well, like, they wanted to. Well, Shia LaBeouf stopped acting at that point, I think. Yeah, then they found out that he's yeah. actually... Really but we're not yeah. talking about Transformers, Sure, I don't want to... But, uh, but the third writer that was in the third writer that was in this um, part of this movie, he actually has uh, written for all three of the original um, Men in Black movies. So, I mean, he's yeah. been through this the entire time. So, he's he been wrote a part one of good movie, and then a less good movie, and then a really bad movie, and then this one, which is fine. I think that... <laughs> I think they they tried to do like too many different writers for the second and third one, yeah. and they had too many conflicting ideas, and that they all wanted to put into the movie, and right. uh, it just yeah the other ones didn't mesh well. Uh, this one is just there's a lot of parts where it just seems like they they're force feeding you a, a, like a lot of stuff that's that really isn't necessary. Yeah, but. Uh, it was still fine. Yeah, it was still it was still a fine movie. Fine. Not not that big a deal. Yeah. yeah, it was better than the third one. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I I know I watched the third one. I completely forgot what it was about until you reminded me, <laughs> and I still don't remember actual parts of the third movie. Like that's how bad. Like I think I just watched it and I'm all like, "This was terrible." I'm gonna never remember any of this. Yeah, stuff. Was, and I didn't. That was the one where Thanos plays uh, <laughs> young Agent K. That's right. <laughs> Thanos. Thanos. Thanos is a young Tommy Lee Jones. Maybe you can. Uh, I mean, it wasn't like the worst casting choice. No, I'm not saying it was a bad casting choice. I'm just saying like, he was Thanos. That's. He's, he is Thanos now. But like yeah. back then, he was he was he the, was Thanos now. Back then, Thanos, Thanos. Back then, he was the older brother Batman from uh, the Goonies. Got his head cut off, <laughs> and then disintegrated in the same movie. So yeah. Sure. So what he is now is Cable. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Tommy Lee Jones is Josh Brolin is Cable. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a lot 
lot more to say about this movie. Yeah. We're already going 25 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're, like, yeah, I mean, that's pretty, that pretty much just sums up the <laughs> entire movie. I mean, there really wasn't much to spoil. A lot of it's in the a lot of it's a in lot the trailer. Of it's in the trailer. Yeah, like they really um, uh, ruin everything in the trailer. Yeah, although it was cool watching the you know planet destroying weapon being fired at like point oh one percent, and then creating a new Grand Canyon in you know in the middle of the like in the, uh, middle of the desert. The desert. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was neat. <laughs> Uh, Do you think anyone's going to notice? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, I don't really have anything left to say about this movie. Yeah, do neither do I. So, and here we end it. Huh? Here's to you. Here's to me. Friends for life we should always be. And if by chance we disagree, well then screw you. Here's, here's to me. me. Cheers. <laughs>